Black Women for Beginners by S. Pearl Sharp, illustrated by Beverly Hawkins Hall. Black Women for Beginners. Movers and shakers. I'll tell you why I did all these things. It's very simple. I did all these things because they needed to be done. Marie Grace Augustine, planter. A warrior queen A warrior queen who would not war is Hatshepsut, my favorite, ruler of 18th 18 Egypt's 18th dynasty for 30 some years. Her strengths were rebuilding, massive trade expeditions and aggressive leadership. She took the throne from its male heir and declared herself Pharaoh, even dressing as male. This is an image of Hatshepsut, Egypt's 18th dynasty, 1505 to 1485 BC, considered the greatest female leader of all time. We dub her the patron ancestor of the movers and shakers. Her monument inscription is, I have restored that which is in ruins. I have raised up that which was unfinished. Over the last 300 years, the movers and shakers have punched a heavy time clock, doing double time, overtime, and jail time. Education, women's rights, welfare, labor, abolition, suffrage, civil rights, temperance. Why movements? The problem, racism and sexism, which means one movement can't be separated from another. The price, body and spirit. The prize, self-determination and a protected freedom. Abolition. After three centuries of chattel slavery worldwide, the movement to abolish it finally took hold. Abolition was the major movement of the 19th century. Now, despite his story giving most of the credit to whites, black abolitionists carried equal weight and black women were popular abolition speakers throughout the Americas and Europe. Maria Stewart's 1832 anti-slavery speech in Boston was considered audacious, as women of that time weren't supposed to speak in public. 1851, Eliza Parker was among those arrested for resisting a slave owner's attempt to reclaim his escaped slaves under the Fugitive Slave Act. The slave owner was killed, and Eliza was put on trial twice before escaping to Canada. Sarah Maps Douglas, a devout Quaker, and her mother helped found the Philadelphia Female Anti-Slavery Society. The Quakers supported abolition, but kept Sarah in segregated seating at their meetings. In the Virgin Islands, in the Virgin Islands, legends credit Anne Helgard, 1790 to 1859, with bringing slavery to a halt through her intimate relationship with the Danish governor. The gap between the end of the slave trade and the end of real slavery was, in some countries, as long as 60 years. Several years after emancipation, slaves from the USA were still being smuggled into Cuba. Going well? Education. Africans built the world's first libraries 
and universities. A race now rejected for their sable skin and frizzled hair founded those civil and religious systems, arts and scientists will still govern the universe. That was from Count Constantine de Volnay, Voyage on Egypt et Syrie, 1787, and Ruins, Revolution of Empires, France. Blacks knew that education was something worth having because <clears throat> their oppressors tried to keep it from them. Start now. It's against the law for y'all to vote, read, go to school, be unemployed, or get too friendly with white folks. Even whites were jailed for the crime of teaching slaves. Constance Baker Motley was part of the NAACP's legal team that won the landmark 1954 U.S. Supreme Court decision allowing racially segregated schools. She was the first black American woman to become a federal judge. We shall not, we shall not be moved. 11,000 U.S. government troops were sent to protect nine black children who integrated a white school in 1957. We shall overcome. And in South Africa, we learn by losing children and dying terrible deaths how to hold a gun and a grenade. We know now how to make fire. Repeat after me. We will be good servants. We will be good servants. In North America, Mary Jane McLeod Bethune, 1875 to 1955, symbolizes the education is the key philosophy. With $1.50, she opened a small school in Florida and nurtured it into the prestigious Bethune-Cookman College. Today, it boasts some 10,000 alumni. Bethune's bronze statue is featured here. It's in Washington, D.C. Bethune became an advisor on Negro issues to U.S. presidents and was part of the body that formed the United Nations. Thirst for education, knowledge is the prime need of the hour. Bethune's contemporary, Anna Julia Cooper, who was born in 1858 and died in 1964, taught school for 45 years, received her doctorate from Paris's renowned Sorbonne University, and at the age of 66, then opened a university in her home so working blacks could attend college at night. She lived to be 105. Even with this kind of talent on the planet, it took more than 100 years for Spelman College, one of the world's most prestigious schools, for black women to put a black woman at its helm. Dr. Janetta Cole, anthropologist, author, and educator, in 1987 became president of Spelman College. Movers and shakers face educational systems that ignore the black woman's survival needs. Wives of former Portuguese officials infiltrated our organization and became responsibles. Our women were learning how to cook desserts with eggs when they, they had no eggs at home, or to crochet doilies for tables when they had no tables. Annabella Rodriguez, Organization of Mozambican Women, 1979. And leave the women to create systems that work. In South Africa's Natal province, a hospital director provides arithmetic and English classes with health care. 112 over 75 equals. Mothers build their own creche, nursery, where they then learn sewing, literacy, and the politics of male virility. That was from a Gabon 1966 literacy campaign. 
In Jamaica, Amy Bailey wanted to give dignity to domestics. She opened the Homecraft Training Center in 1942 so Jamaican women could learn cooking, catering, morality, and mannerisms. 6,000 people had graduated by the mid-1970s. Liberation movements created their own curriculums. Suffrage and representation. Enfranchise, verb. To set free from bondage, to admit to citizenship. Suffrage, noun. The right to vote. Are we suffering yet? The power of the vote is crucial to real self-determination. In South Africa, where black men and women have not been allowed self-determination for more than 300 years, voting is described as something that white people do. In Mozambique and New Guinea, women didn't, have, didn't win the right to vote until 1975. Women's suffrage was won in the U.S. in 1920 and in Great Britain in 1928, but not for all women. While white women fought to obtain voting rights for the members of their sex, black women fought to obtain the vote for their people and hoped that as women, they would be included. When they were excluded, black women continued the battle to win suffrage for women, certain that they would be included. We prefer Bridget and Dinah at the ballot box to Patrick and Sambo. That was a quote from Elizabeth Cady Stanton. No Negro shall be enfranchised while white women are not. Uh oh. The Alpha Suffrage Club, the first group of black women suffragists in the United States, was organized in Chicago by journalist Ida B. Wells Barnett in 1913. Forty years later, many blacks were still denied the vote through so-called literacy tests, real estate requirements, job loss, and outright physical terror. The government giveth and the government taketh away. Fannie Lou Hamer, a Mississippi USA sharecropper with a sixth grade education, almost lost her life during years of struggle for black voter registration. She survived and helped unseat an all-white delegation at the 1968 Democratic Convention. Tested, checked, arrested, check, fired, check, fined, check, evicted, check, shot, check, beaten, check. She still wants to register. Oh, I must be dead. Enfranchisement means representation. Representation means the power to change. Once enfranchised, black women moved on the political system with a mission. Ugh, oh, working in the system after what is done to your people. Checkmate. Martyr. Gabre Sadiq was the first woman senator of Ethiopia under Emperor Haile Selassie. Checkmate Diane Abbott in 1987 became the first black woman elected to Britain's parliament in its 700 year history. Checkmate Princess Elizabeth Nyabongo, a fashion model, served as Uganda's Minister of Foreign Affairs and an ambassador under Idi Amin. Checkmate, Rosemary Brown, a Jamaican, was the first black woman to hold office in any Canadian parliament. Elected to the legislature of British Columbia in 1972, she was re-elected three times. Checkmate, Benedita da Silva, 
Brazilian Congresswoman, helped structure the new Brazilian Constitution adopted in 1988 in response to Blacks' demands for equality. Checkmate. Shirley Chisholm, a former nursery school teacher, was the first Black U.S. Congresswoman and in 1972, the first Black and first woman to seek the presidency with a major political party. My role is more that of a catalyst by trying to strip off the masks that make people uncomfortable, make people comfortable in the midst of chaos. Perhaps I can help get things moving. Shirley Chisholm, unbought and unbossed, United States. Welfare. Welfare in the original sense means to fare well in one's health, prosperity, and state of mind. The welfare of a community begins with the welfare of its women. There's a direct correlation between well-faring women and their, one, access to natural resources, two, education level, and three, life expectancy rate. In Sierra Leone, in 1985, only 9% of the women were literate, and their life expectancy was only 33 and a half years. Today is the birthday of my daughter, Vera Eunice. I can't give her a party, for this would be like trying to grab a hold of the sun with my hands. Today there's nothing to eat. I wanted to invite the children for a mutual suicide, but I resisted. Carolyn Maria de Jesus, child of the dark in Brazil. Women who do not fare well add sawdust to food to make it seem like more, are paid half of what men earn for the same work, have no money for health care, endure economic and sexual exploitation in the government centers designed to help them, are most susceptible to mental disorders, put most of their energy into food gathering, feed their children before themselves, and are most likely to die from starvation. More than one half of the black women in the civilized world do not fare well. Help comes from pooling resources, education, and organizing. Nigeria's first lady, Miriam Babangida, founded the Better Life Program in 1987 to empower rural women. They formed health centers, over 12,000 cooperatives and at-home businesses that have produced consumer products and significantly increased food production. They ought to be a woman can break down, sit down, break down, sit down, like everybody else calls it quits. Tezo, one of Africa's first self-help groups for those with the AIDS virus was started in Uganda in 1986 by Noreen Kaliba. Biting her lips and lowering her eyes to make sure that there's food on the table. And wouldn't she be surprised if the world was as willing as she's able? Jane Edna Hunter started the Working Girls Home Association in Ohio in 1911 to provide respectable housing for single black women entering the labor force. Condemned by some for hindering integration, her efforts grew into the Phyllis Wheatley Association, which still provides low-cost housing and social centers for ladies of color in many large cities. Mum Cheryl is a legend in Australia, using her own resources to administer to Aboriginal prisoners and their families until the system became too sophisticated to welcome her grassroots services. And in Suriname, Sophie Redman, the country's first black woman medical doctor, wrote theatrical plays to raise the consciousness of women and children. Labor. Women demonstrate with the South African Congress of Trade Unions. 
and women co-founded two of Trinidad's major labor unions, which still exist today. Civil rights. Now what does she want? The civil rights struggle is an old one that keeps repeating. Mary Ellen Mammy Pleasant successfully sued the city of San Francisco in the 1860s for forcibly removing her from a streetcar, thus ending the ban against black riders. In 1877, Ida B. Wells sued the state of Tennessee for segregated train seating, but lost. In 1955, Rosa Parks' refusal to give up her bus seat to a white person in Alabama sparked a movement. And repeating, Lillian Goye was charged with high treason for leading her South African sisters in one of the country's biggest protests against women carrying passbooks. Most of her 18 years of her life were spent under house arrest. Albertina Sisulu, co-leader of South Africa's aggressive United Democratic Front and mother of seven, has spent nearly 20 years confined to her house under government banning orders and repeating. In 1938, Elma Francoise, a laundress and labor leader in Trinidad, Tobago, was tried for uttering words having seditious intention. She handled her own defense and was acquitted in three days. Ida B. Wells' book documenting lynchings in the U.S. over a 30-year period after emancipation, the Black Women's Club movement grew out of her anti-lynching crusade. A century later, in 1981, Beulah Mae Donald's 19-year-old son was lynched in Alabama. Donald tracked down the killers herself and won a financial judgment against them. <laughs> Within each of the struggles has been a second battleground denied equal rights with her own men. What is wrong in woman's life in man's cannot be right. Some women aren't allowed to sign documents or make large purchases. Some women are forced into polygamous marriages. Some women are sterilized without consent. Some women are not allowed out of the house. Some women. Most men still don't have the faintest idea what our struggle is about. It isn't just to go into bars or to have two, three husbands, as some men have several wives. We're fighting to have equal power in the management of our affairs. At the moment, we have an equal vote, but we don't have an equal voice. Arcadia Saraiva, 1987, Angola. Sometimes, as women only, do we weep. We are taught to whisper when we wish to scream assent, when we wish to defy, dance pretty on tiptoe, when we would raise circles of dust before the charge. Gloria Gales, USA. Which is why there had to be a women rights liberation movement. But in a movement designed to eliminate restrictions on women, restrictions have fallen between women. Like, Women being used in the sociological writings to assume only white Anglo-Saxon women, as in the often used term, women and blacks. Racism has been the thorn between white and black women seeking the same political results. White women were also active as abolitionists, but their failure to work with more than a token number of black women foretold the conflicts that would later arise in the women's rights movement. Black women were absent from the first major feminist convention at Seneca Falls, New York, in 1848. Jean Cory Board, Bond, from the bottom up. It never hurts to have some backup. So, Movers and Shakers did a lot of work through the club movement. Their mission 
was to challenge racism, protect the sisterhood, and elevate the race. In the 1800s, Brazil, Boa Morte, originally an anti-slavery society, is one of the oldest black women's organizations in the Western Hemisphere and still exists. 1832, USA, African-American Female Intelligence Society of Boston, a literary circle, sponsored one of the first black woman abolitionist speakers. 1896, USA, the National Association of Colored Women, a merger of clubs founded early by Mary Church Terrell and Josephine Ruffin, focused on race issues and their motto, lift as we climb. 1902, Canada, Colored Women's Club of Montreal evolved from a support group for the Boer War victims. 1905, USA, League for the Protection of Colored Women, which merged beco to become the National Urban League. 1935, Trinidad and Tobago, Negro Welfare Cultural and Social Association, which created the first labor unions for the government, trade, sailors, and waterfront workers. 1935, USA, the National Council of Negro Women, founded by Mary McLeod Bethune, as an umbrella for many of black women's clubs with a focus on black economic power. And as her voice grew stronger, the club evolved, priorities intensified. 1945, Mozambique, Women's Wing of Frelimo. It was organized by Josina Michelle, engaged in armed combat to win independence. 1950, Brazil, National Council of Black Women, founded by Maria Machamento. 1954, South Africa, Federation, Federation of South African Women. Lillian Ngoyi was its president for 22 years. 1963, Angola, Organización de Mujer Agolana, mobilized support for the independence movement. Since independence, it has worked for women's education, working conditions, and political participation. 1967, Ethiopia, General Union of Eritrean Women, found, formed in Cairo. In 1970, the Women's Council of SWAPO, which is the Southwest African People's Organization, to enable women to participate in the armed struggle for independence. 1983 in USA, the Black Women's Health Network focuses on improving the health status of women and their communities. Struggle is the friction that holds Black people together. Septima Clark, USA. Now, if truth to be told, tell the truth, sweetheart. Some sisters moved and shake to a spastic drummer and became part of the problem instead of the solution. The Tasmanian Triganini assisted in the rounding up of her people, thinking they would be better off on the reserves. It led to the extinction. In the early 1800s, several free and wealthy black women in Virginia owned slaves. Stop! As an FBI undercover agent, Julia Brown snitched on black folks during the outrageous anti-communist witch hunts of the 1950s. She was praised by the U.S. Congress for her work. Emily West also known as the Yellow Rose of Texas. I know that song. Black folks wrote that song. She's the sweetest rose of color a failure ever knew. Her eyes are bright as diamonds. They hush. Miss West, through a romantic liaison, helped the U.S. take the area now called Texas away from Mexico. Another case of the USA snatching land that didn't belong to them. Well, hush my mouth. We already did. Now, the original Make It Happen, Get It Done divas are, of course, mothers. They do not come by this skill naturally. They get it 
by going to the Black Mother's School, a requirement. You learn there the race chair. You can do anything that any other kind can do. The economic policy. The Lord helps those who help themselves. The law of gravity. Girl, keep your head up and your skirt down. The ISIS creed. I brought you into this world and I will take you out of it. Generations of black mothers did double duty, mothering their own race and another at the same time. The movers and shakers are neither larger than life nor other than us. They, we, they were and are everyday women who became special by responding to their people's needs. What about full moons and sojourner? Slow music and Harriet. What about those nights in the heat when they didn't have to run or hide or pray? No speech or plea to convince anyone of their power. Those nights when they laid there naked, alone or with another, clean sheets, one small candle, flowers in a glass, and the slow, easy rise of their stomachs, the slow, easy spread of their breast. Sophia Henderson Holmes, USA. And that is the end of our chapter, Movers and Shakers. I hope you enjoyed this wonderful presentation written by S. Pearl Sharp. And I hope you'll come back to visit us next week and spend some time where we will be talking about those black women who are taking care of business. Con girl, working for the devil. Con girl. Taking dictation like a bumblebee. Yeah, you make your music on a typewriter. Yeah, you make carbon copies sing. You make work seem like a boogaloo now. Corn girl. See you next week. Where I'll be reading Black Women for Beginners. Have a fabulous weekend.